Hey guys, this is FB Plays, and welcome to today's episode of the Minish Cap. Last time we ascended to the cloud tops and made it all the way up to the top of the Wind Tribe's home here. And today we're going to take on the Wind Palace, or the Palace of Winds, I guess, technically. What an irritation! We find our way to the very tops of the clouds, and now we have to go even higher to find a floating palace? I can't believe what a long way we've come, and look how high we are. Don't look down, Link, and watch your step. It's a long fall from here. Thank you, Ezlo. But yeah, he is right, we've come quite a long way. I don't find it irritating though, I find it pretty cool. From what I remember, this is one of my favorite dungeons in the game alongside the Temple of Droplets, so I hope it still holds up on this playthrough. Might as well get rid of those guys so they can't annoy us. Anyway, last time I unfortunately realized that I missed an item permanently that I cannot get on this playthrough. And that is the Light Arrows. Uh, several episodes ago, I actually missed um, a Kinstone fusion with this one Wind Tribe member in Hyrule Town. And I forgot that it was a time sensitive thing. Um, where basically, if we had gone back and done it before going to the Cloud Tops, we would have gone into their palace early and been able to save someone from dying which sounds pretty drastic, but basically it was like this old man dying of illness or something. Um, but I never went back for that, and he basically just literally has died since we were not there to save him. And that means I will not be getting the light arrows this playthrough, which is kind of a bummer. Um, and I kind of don't like that it was just total RNG that I happened to not have the right Kinstone piece the first time I was uh, trying to fuse with that one character. I wish the game had done a little more to hint that it was time sensitive, so I maybe could have planned to uh, try doing that before I came here. But um, it is what it is, so unfortunately this won't be a 100% thing, but uh, oh well. There's a fluffy cloud floating here. It looks awfully comfortable. Alright, interesting observation, Ezlo. Thank you for that. The main puzzle gimmick here seems to be these bridges that you gotta do, uh, that you gotta activate with your arrows. But nothing too bad so far. Uh, can I get it from here? There we go. But yeah, I am pretty bummed that I am no longer able to get 100% because of that, because that's something I like to try to do. Um, but again, it's yeah, I'm just glad it's not a heart piece or something that I'm missing, because I like getting those. Um, all of those, especially. And the light arrows aren't essential for... Oh, no, no, no. There we go, we made that in time. But yeah, the light arrows aren't essential for completing the game or anything, so... Uh, I've got some whiz robes to deal with here. I'm just glad the whiz robes aren't as annoying in this game as they were in Zelda 1. Ooh, there's a whole bunch of them though, yikes. I think where they appear is random too. Makes it a little bit tricky, but still not nearly as annoying as the NES games. There we go. Oh, wow. Okay, not expecting that. Yikes. That was a lot more than I was expecting. Now we get the dungeon item, 
And this is actually, this almost made my list of top 10 items on my main channel when I was doing that for, uh, like the top 10 Zelda items in the series. It didn't quite make my list, but I do love this item. It appears in all of the Game Boy Zelda games, I believe, and it actually allows Link to jump. So, uh, before, before Breath of the Wild, this was pretty much, um... How, like, the only way Link was able to jump. So it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it a lot. And we also just saw some blue shoes, the electric ones, uh, one or two episodes ago. Actually, a handful by now. I was wondering if the Temple of Droplets mini boss was the only instance of a blue shoe, but apparently it's not. So that's cool. Okay, so we're going to have to make three versions of ourselves. Okay, we're going to have to hit all these switches at once, it looks like. That's fun, I like that. Nice little puzzle. Oh yeah, and then we cannot use items when we have our clones out. For some reason, I wish you could. I feel like they could have done some really cool puzzles with that, but oh well. There's a strong gale blowing here. Try not to get swept away. And hold on to your hat. Alright, Ezlo, well, I'll do my best. There we go, those holes are there for safety. And it looks like we're gonna have to jump across here anyway. Ah, that is a strong wind. But that wasn't too... Oh, oops, I was just going to say that wasn't too bad, and then I get blown off from there. Oops. Apparently I need to be paying more attention. Oop, no, no, no. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, I'm surprised that didn't work. Hmm... Oh, wait a second. Maybe we're supposed to do this. Okay, there we go. That was pretty clever. I like that. That panel. I think if we stomped on it hard enough, it might flip over. I think so too, Ezlo. So yeah, we just have to jump on those to flip them over. kind of reminds me of New Super Mario Bros. Wii, where you had to punch panels to turn them over, like in the castle levels. I think this game technically did it first, but it's not the most original concept anyway. So yeah, Palace of Winds has been pretty good so far. I don't know if it's fully lived up to my memories of my first time doing it yet, but it's been fun. It's had some nice little uh, platforming challenges. And I do really like the item we get a lot. I was thinking about it the other day and I realized there's really only three true uh, like sky or wind themed dungeons in the series. And that's um, this one, the City in the Sky and Twilight Princess, and then uh, Von Mado in Breath of the Wild. Which really surprised me, because for some reason I thought there were a lot more. Oh, okay, it looks like we have to get... Okay, so I messed that one up somehow. Ran out of time, I think, on my clones. Oh wait, I think I timed that wrong again. Yep, I am not paying very much attention. Oh, I am literally just on autopilot. What am I doing? Okay, we're gonna try this. But yeah, I was just like... Wow. But yeah, just literally going on autopilot. Okay, there we go. Somehow I was running into the wall slightly and it was making them go away, but we got through eventually. 
Oh, and are we gonna need them again for this? No, we can just push the block. Okay, that's that's good. Ah, these crows are pests. Oh, come on, there we go. They weren't pesky enough to stop us, thankfully. So yeah, this seems to be one of those dungeons that prioritizes kind of the like the action or the movement a little bit more than the puzzles. But that can be fun, and I think this is a good execution of it. Because the puzzles have been fairly easy so far, it's mostly just the timing of all the jumping and making the clones and everything. And it looks like we need the cane of Pachi again. Now we have another clone puzzle. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Hopefully it doesn't hit it this time while I'm still trying to make my clones here. And that's going to give us a nice minish portal. I want to see what's up here though. Just want to scope it out. Okay, we can't go up there yet. So we'll go ahead and use our portal. This shouldn't be too tricky, I don't think. Just pushing some pots out of our way. There's usually only one option, so... Makes it a little bit easier. Is that what we want to do? Oh wait, I might have actually tricked myself here. Hmm. I guess it's a bit trickier than I thought. Or maybe, yeah, hmm. I guess I messed one of the movements up somehow. That's the only thing we can do there, but now we can move this one up or move that one left. I'm trying to think ahead to the next move. I think we want to do this one. And then, let's see, again, it's like a, yeah, I think this is all we can do here. And now we can push that one, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Did not mean to do that, I don't think that was the right answer. Gosh dang it. Oh wait, this might, oh, nope, it's gonna get it stuck again. That was not what I meant to do. I was trying to just think out loud, but oh well. Okay, yeah, I think we want to go down right there, and then... Yes, I think I see. We want to go push that one down. Push the next one down. Push that one left, that one up. Okay, so yeah, we want to go like this. And then we can push this one out of the way, and boom, there we go. Third time's a charm. That was a good puzzle, I enjoyed that. And now it looks like we want to cross this room. Not sure what to expect over here. back in the human form. Looks like we want to hit that switch. Ah, and that's going to give us a key. And now we're back here. Okay, cool. I don't remember exactly where the locked door was, but I'm sure it's not too far away. There it is. And now we just ascend the clouds once more. OK, 
Okay, not sure if there's going to be something down that way. There's some moblins up here. We'll try to dispatch them. Oh my gosh. They pushed me right off. Oh, that's so annoying. Alright, it's rematch time. I think the trick with these guys is to use your shield. I mean, it kind of repels them, but... It doesn't really give them an opening. Or it doesn't really give you an opening, rather. There we go. Might as well just push him off the cliff. I keep wanting to do the Gust Jar instead of Rock's Cape, I guess because they're similarly colored. There we go, we made that jump somehow. Um, okay. I guess we'll go this way then. Yikes, don't want to get zapped. And then this one... Aw, oh, my timing was a bit off, but we want to jump right as it starts blowing, and it'll push us way across. Okay, we have those guys again. Oh my gosh. That does make them a little bit tricky. Oh yeah, the gust jar was how we got rid of those guys, I remember that. I'm going to be switching my items a lot, it looks like. Uh, I probably won't even need this sword here, actually. I think I'll go up first. I'm guessing that's what we're meant to do. Maybe. Ah, okay, that gives us some extra jump height. Pretty cool. I like how this game, even though it's technically 2D, manages to make really good use of, like, I don't know, kind of like the perception of depth to make it look like there's different um, heights and everything. It's actually very clever. I don't want to miss that piece of heart, that's for sure. Can I get it from here? Nope, that wall's gonna block us. Um... Okay, wow, that's not gonna work either, evidently. Although that might give us the heart piece, it looks like that almost works. Ah, nope. Alright, let's try it this way. There we go. What floor are we on now? Fifth floor. Wow, we're way up there in the sky. The air pressure would be terrible up here. Link's ears have got to be, like, bursting. Ooh, okay, I don't think we fought these guys yet. I'm gonna equip my shield for this, that's for sure. Yikes. Okay, so it can come back and get you. I have a fairy, so I'm not gonna worry too much about my hearts. I think I'm actually gonna need that fairy. Okay, so you wanna get out of the way, that's the trick. You gotta block them, and then move. Ooh, and I have my Peril Beam active. Wow, so without my Fairy, I actually would have died, though. And that's, I think, the first time in this whole playthrough that I've, like, legitimately lost my hearts. Because last time I technically, like, gave myself the game over to get rid of the sound effect, but that time the enemies actually bested me, and that's pretty cool. I like the challenge of this dungeon. Glad that I had a Fairy. Minish Cap is one of those games that would be difficult if it didn't just give you healing all over the place. Like, for example, there's another fairy. 
Uh, I think I'll catch her in a bottle. But, um, you know, a lot of these Zelda games actually get really hard if you, like, play them on, like, hero mode, which Minish Cap doesn't have, but a lot of the Zelda games are only, like, easy, I think, because they have healing and potions and everything all over the place. But if you took that away, some of them would actually be pretty tough. And Breath of the Wild especially, like, if you couldn't just eat all the time... Oh, I see what I did wrong here, but if you couldn't just pause in the middle of the fight and then just eat stuff and then um, get your health back, uh, it would be really hard for sure. One time I was actually doing sort of a challenge run, or as I called it, like a classic Zelda run in Breath of the Wild, where I could only heal myself with, like, cooked meals or elixirs, and not just the raw materials. Ooh, that's a tricky jump. And I could also only wear, like, um, the armor sets, like, all together as one set. And that was on Master Mode, so it actually made it a more fun playthrough, I found, kind of having those parameters in place. When I get around to Let's Playing Breath of the Wild, I might do it that way. Once again, I'm glad I got that fairy, because I might need it if I'm not careful here. Come on, there we go. Uh, do I want to defeat these guys? Might as well. Don't really need the rupees, but the but hearts would be nice. Am I going to want to press this switch down using a pot? I guess not. Oops. Kind of want to go back for this. There we go, that takes care of the annoying sound effects. Ah, so close. These trick jumps are actually pretty hard. You have to kind of jump and then move your controller, uh, or actually your D-pad at the right time. So definitely a little bit of a tricky dungeon. Thankfully, there are abundant fairies, so we don't really have to worry. I think there were two locked doors, but I'm just going to go through this one since it's right here. Ooh. The big key, okay. Oh my gosh, they just... They want to make sure we have full health at all times, apparently. That's nice of them. Let's see, yeah, we haven't even got the compass and the... Um, what's it called? the uh, dungeon map yet, which is very strange. I wonder if I just walked right by them. Ugh, I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but I'm no good with heights. Wait, hold on. I think I see something down there. Huh. I guess that means we have to take the plunge after all, hmm? Well, there is a nice convenient arrow on the floor pointing in that direction, so I would assume so. Is this the boss? Oh no, okay, it's another mini boss. I was gonna say. He can block our sword beams, but we can block his attacks with our shield. I wonder if we can just push him off. Kind of a cheap strategy, but might work. 
Okay, he's changing up his sword strike a little bit. Making it a bit harder to get in, but there we go. Usually these blue portals mean we're only halfway through, so I think I'm actually going to call this episode right here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.